ワシントンに近い港町ボルチモアこの静かな港町で平穏なサラリーマン生活を送ってきたグッドナウさん彼の生活はウォーターゲート事件をきっかけに一変してしまいました This was the first of two days of hearings where General Petraeus and Ambassador Crocker gave their assessment on the war in Iraq. Members of Code Pink, the Iraq Veterans Against the War, and other activists were there to also let their voices be heard. As citizens began to go into the hearing, Reverend Lennox Yearwood was told that he was not going to be able to go into the hearing because this woman from the Capitol staff claimed that he had not been in line the entire time. And even though everyone around him could attest to the fact that he had been in line the entire time, he was immediately threatened with arrest, arrested, and assaulted by the police.
Less than a minute later, Cindy Sheehan's sister Dee Dee was also placed in handcuffs. And within the hour, the police would go on to arrest an activist by the name of Lori Perdue over what could be described as a clerical error. Cindy, you're an inspiration. Tell my truth, Brad. Hey, everyone, clear the area, please. Leave the area. Police were on high alert, ready to arrest anyone that they considered to be acting disorderly in any way. Except when this man threatened to spit on the Code Pink women, he was simply told to leave the building. ニクソン大統領弾劾を呼びかけるポスターの山グッドナウさんは奥さんと2人だけで大統領弾劾に向けて100万人の署名を集める決心をしました彼は共和党の政策に賛成し事件まではニクソン大統領を支持してきましたしかしひとたび自分の選んだ大統領が解任に値する行為をした以上それをやめさせるのも自分の責任とばかりサラリーマン生活ともぷっつり縁を切りました運動資金といえばわずかばかりの蓄えとポスターを配って得る大金のみしかも大統領弾劾は議会の権限であり集めた署名に法的な力は何もありませんその限界を承知の上での決意なのです Retired U.S. Army officer and also as a diplomat who resigned in opposition to the war in Iraq. And I'm here at the Petraeus and、uh, the w h i t r o c k e r hearings to hear what they have to say about what they, they feel is necessary for the United States to do in Iraq. I personally believe,、uh, after the testimony of both of them yesterday, that still the best thing for the United States is to, uh, uh, to remove itself from, from Iraq. One can, one can be an occupying force for the next decades, which 
I think is really what Petraeus and uh, Crocker are saying, that it, in their, the, to do things the way they want to do them, it will require an occupation of several decades. And I maintain that the Iraqi people will not put up with the United States being here. Uh, the, the polls are showing that the Iraqi people, 85% of them are saying the United States needs to leave and that conditions are worse under U.S. occupation than they were under Saddam Hussein. You know about the bus? It's the Yellow Rose of Texas Peace Bus. At the hearing, Jim ran into his friend from Japanese TV, the one who had made a copy of Jim's 1970s interview. I left the hearing with Carlos Arredondo, and on our way to a 9-11 truth rally, we ended up running into the presidential motorcade. Motorcade, yeah. Motorcade, see the motorcade? Oh, yeah, they come this way. Carlos and I watched as the very people responsible for his son being sent to a war that would take his life drove by us. I can't even begin to imagine what a heart-wrenching moment this must have been for Carlos. and against the war and torture has been walking from Denver, Colorado. So give Brother Elliot a hand. His head wedged between the ground and a policeman's knee. His legs tangled in a knot across the tiled floor. Reverend Yearwood, a known pacifist, is being charged with assaulting a policeman. Those of you who've seen the YouTube videos know this is absolutely a fabrication on the part of the police. For telling the authority one simple word, no. And in no, I will not allow you, as in no, I will not allow you to trample over my children with my horses. You guys saw the YouTube video of uh, Tina Richards about two days ago. You were there, Adam, yeah. As in no, I will not remain silent when your lies make soldiers die. As in no, I will not let you bash my head against the floor while you pump you, you pompously call this land the land of the free. From his stretcher at George Washington Hospital, the Reverend has issued the creed of this era. He has uttered the greatest commandment of this movement. In one word, defiance of tyranny and the refusal of complacency have been, have been declared. You may trample us with your horses. This is a message to those people out there waiting to arrest us right now. You may trample us with your horses. You may throw us in your jails. You may wedge our heads between stone floors and stormtroopers. But there comes a time when silence in the name of injustice is America's greatest terrorist. And so today, we shout at the tops of our voices in the name of the Constitution, in the name of humanity, in the name of God Almighty, the heaven and the earth, we say no, and we will not be silenced. The protesters left Lafayette Park, marching past the White House and up the street to the U.S. Capitol. When the protesters arrived at the U.S. Capitol, they were physically pushed at by these individuals who called them dope-smoking communists. But here are these individuals in their own words. I'm a Vietnam vet. I've seen this thing come and go. Once you surrender, you know, it's a good thing your grandfathers did stop Nazism, you know, because now you got Islamic fascism going on, and it's 
wimps like you guys and cowards, they're going to let that thing go forward. You've got to stand up like Roosevelt and Truman did and Winston Churchill, Churchill, and then you'll learn how to overcome your fear. But don't be so naive and afraid, you know? Have some personality and pers strength and perseverance. Then you guys will learn. Okay. Well, Thank you. Thanks for the interview. Don't think, you, Thanks for don't the interview. Don't you think George Bush played on people's fears? Here's the interview. He did. Weapons. Choice. <laughs> <laughs>
I have a family that any minute that I call them, they are out there. But I have given up all of that for this. No, it's not for me. I'm 60 years old. And everybody here, they have everything to live for. But they are, that's what they are living. We, our life has become carrying a constitution. Even if it can't get a majority, some people are well old enough to remember that 1972, all the Judiciary Committee had to do was, was uh, vote out three articles of impeachment. And four days later, Nixon resigned. We can all say George Bush won't do that. It doesn't matter. What matters is that the Congress the right do its do constitutional the right duty of, of speaking out and indicting these crimes, which are world crimes, war crimes. That Pelosi is overseeing more aggressive and heinous legislation ongoing. She's not trying to, excuse me, are you listening? Because we're, we're here, and what I'm worried about is if we have one aide here, we should have like five aides here. We're a lot of people. We should have. We should have We're in charge. We are paying for it. 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 We are draconian laws in this country for lack of due process, for more uh, focus of power in the executive branch, allowing you to go along in cahoots. And so it might be a point where we have to step in and say, does the speaker need to be impeached? What really is going on here? If this was Hitler, this would be an emergency. But we're the closest to Hitler that this country has ever gotten. This is an emergency. We can give her the backing to do what is right, and she won't look like she's attacking her Republicans or the third in line for presidency. She can benefit by our presence, and we will work to back her if she will join hands with us. I've met with congressional aides for, for maybe 20 years now, and they've always given me answers to my questions. Why can't you? I respect that you're in a position of great authority in her administration. I respect that. But I'm asking, as her chief of staff, that's a position very close to her, that you cannot answer the questions makes me realize that this is a, a, an administration for the, the ruling elite. Because we are the people. We are a people, a varied people here. Varied. We're educated in many different ways. We come from many different walks of life. We're multi, you know, in the class where we come from, and you can't talk to us. Do you know what that means? That there is actually a silence between you and us? That is just a breakdown of our democracy. The chief of staff closed the door on the protesters, and the protesters continued on reading the letters. in our democracy, impeach Bush and Cheney. What would a president have to do to get impeached if lying about our nation's national security isn't an impeachable offense? Impeach Bush and Cheney. Nancy Pelosi, your silence will be your legacy. Impeach! Impeach! <laughs> Mona, I saw him today. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, our little sweetie. He was so sweet. He was a nice boy. Oh, this is the bastard right here. He was the one that grabbed now, my arm. Now, he's all right. But he... It, I want to show him my arm what he did to it. So <laughs> look at me, though. Oh! Look, look, come here and see this. <laughs> oh, what's going on here? Oh, this is like, fucking funny! <laughs> That's why they want to kick me out. I was on my feet. I didn't know. Mona, oh, okay. She's a man. Mona, woman. please, please show America. Please show us all the bruises. Oh my God. We'll try to count them. One, oh, you two, look scary. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, arm, ten. Next arm. Eleven bruises. Oh, Twelve yeah, bruises. No. Thirteen and, bruises. And her shoulder's been compromised. And, yeah, and they'll probably say it's makeup, but we all know it's not. It's not right? makeup. I can That's verify. A, I'll try to erase it. Yeah. Get it that, it's real. That, that, none of that is, is fakeable. How old are you? I'll be 70 next month. Ooh. And, and how many officers grabbed you in this picture? Two, and we have a picture right and here. And, Marcello, yeah. and you know something? I have never had a ticket in my life, and not even parking. That's great. 
And not only that, I'm claustrophobic. That's why I was hollering. No, <laughs> no please. I'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you said that to those authors. But you know, it just shows you what they, they're stupid. They're to. capable. They're going after an old grandmother. And, and, and. Do I, do I look like a terrorist? To yeah, you, you do. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Yeah, it, it is really sad I mean, that we yeah. the decline to this, I mean, the criminals are on the other side Why of the Why don't they go after that, those perverts desk. like, uh, what's his name? Like George uh, Bush? Craig. Oh, yeah. Well, Let's see. Off. Can we do Libby. something? Yeah. Yep. And Shaney just gets to up and shoot a guy in the face. Oh, yeah. I am afraid.